uh, so the question comes up, when did we invent clothes and who did? And I can, you know, uh, judging by the record, I can say that only uh, humans were the only ones who ever wore clothes. Woolly mammoths didn't wear clothes. Uh, <laughs> gorillas never wear clothes. They were in, in Africa, you know. And so the question is, uh, what uh, objective evidence do we have of clothes, right? Well, and what there's of, never any clothes found. No, no clothes found. But we find other, other things that indicate whether there could have been clothes. One of them is the needle. You need needles to sew hides together. So when they find the needle, they say, ah, oh, look, oh, why, why would they invent the needle, right? Yeah. And uh, the first needle that we have today, right, is, you see it here in Delson 2000, Encyclopedia of Human Evolution and Prehistory. You mean the oldest needle found? Yeah, and they say bone and antler needles first appear in the Solutrean period, 22,000 to 17,000 years ago, of the Upper Paleolithic and suggest the sewing of hides with a thread made of sinew and vegetable material. So that's the first needle we found, or or the ones that you know uh, uh, we know about. Okay? The oldest needle, but isn't it? Yeah. Hard so to let's find say needles. I'm sorry. Finding needles is kind of <laughs> it's hard. Needle thing. in a haystack, right? Yeah. I find it. Well, ancient needles. You know, but at least uh, again, we're talking about objective data. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we don't see the same thing for a Neanderthal. You don't find a Neanderthal needle. Like, they could, have, they could have taken a bone from some kind of animal, even if it was a crude needle, you know, and they could have sewn some kind of string and tied their hides together. We have no evidence of string or of needles, okay? They didn't even have those fine motor skills, did they? Or Probably not. That they did Maybe they did. Tools Maybe like they did, but they didn't need it for what they did. You know, these, these, these hominids, all they had is... These axes yeah, and like they these hammer, big, tools. big big tools, coarse ones, big stones, and they just killed the animal. They didn't need to have sophisticated things like, oh, I'm going to sew today. Well, know? what That's, tools did they find of the Neanderthals? Well, again, all these that they attributed to. They, they find these big hatchets, these clubs, these spears. These these so are the all tools. All working and, and hunting. And stone, yeah, wood and stone. and stone. But again, you know, sometimes they say that uh, things like string which could be made out of plants that wouldn't survive over time. So Same thing with needles, but... Maybe, yeah. So this is, this is what they say. Okay. Now they did find, uh, there, there's, um, there's a claim, it's in the Siberian Times, a Russian um, uh, magazine, it says, world's oldest needle found in Siberian cave that stitches together human history. <laughs> 2016. Nice pun. Yeah, but the issue is that uh, these people made this claim, as always, you know, the, uh, everybody likes to make outrageous claims without any real uh, objective evidence. And they said they found it in, in this cave out there in Siberia. But then we have a statement by Reich, uh, his group, right, 2010, it says, we, and this is interesting, he said, we dated seven bone fragments found close to the hominin remi, uh, remains in layer 11 in the east and south galleries of the same cave, right? Four of the seven dates are infinite dates older than 50,000 years before the present, whereas three are finite dates between 16,000 and 30,000 years before the present. What does this mean? This layer, 11, layer 11, was contaminated by by two different uh, uh, time frames. The hotel. One, one was one was yeah. It's like a hotel. Different people lived over thousands of years in this cave, and they and in layer eleven where they excavate, they say, well, here we find bones from fifty thousand years ago or artifacts or whatever, and here we find at the same layer we find, you know, uh, things from sixteen thousand years ago. So we don't know if this needle that these people claim they found dates to fifty thousand years ago or sixteen thousand years ago. It could have been made by, you know, Neolithic people for all we know, yeah. uh, which is less than 10,000 years ago. So, so, you know, these are outrageous claims that these people made. Another, another source for clothes is lice. Uh, they came up with a theory that says that we lost our body lice. Source for uh, clothes. That we, we, uh, yeah, clothes? yeah, because uh, uh, supposedly we lost our body hair. And the theory that of why we lost our body hair is that we there was like a tendency to get rid of lice. So this is the theory. In retrospect, they say that we lost our body hair so the lice in our body would not have a place to hide. Okay? okay. So there's like a pull from the future. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, why aren't we all bald? Yeah. <laughs> well, again, and again, gorillas and chimps, they have lice. You yeah. see them grooming each other. So, and they live in, in, in the uh, equator, close to the equator. So they didn't lose their hair because it was too hot. They didn't lose their hair because of lice. But the theory is that we lost our body hair to, so that the lice wouldn't have a place to hide, right? So we had body lice. Over time, we lost our hair. And now that we got rid of, finally got rid of the lice. They mean the ones in Africa. The ones in Africa. These are humans in Africa, right? But then there's several problems with that theory. And again, they say they, they give a time frame here from maybe 75,000 to 175,000 years ago. That's when body lice evolved from hair lice. So we used to have hair lice and approximately maybe they do this through genetic analysis, uh, regression analysis. They say, you know, from our calculations, uh, body lice began to exist. You know, they evolved from, from head lice approximately or at most 175,000 years. That's kind of hard to make sense of because why would the body lice emerge when we start losing our body hair? Or when we start having the tendencies to lose our body hair? Yeah, again, Something I'm, seems crisscrossed there. Uh, again, and, and I have a lot of questions about that theory from different angles. One is that, you know, here we lose our body, uh, lose our hair, and uh, the body lice are now gone because now we finally got rid of that pest. Then we go out there, hunt an animal, take its hide out, and put it on top of us, and we bring the lice back on us. So it does, it's like, you know, we defeat the purpose. So I'm not sure that body lice has anything to do with why we lost hair. But what do, I think we, we just lost about, hair, and that's it. Why are we talking about hair loss? Because uh, we're assuming that humans were completely bald, yeah. <laughs> uh, except like you say, in the head. And uh, we migrate now to Europe, and now we notice that it's cold, but we don't have the um, uh, adaptation to, you know, to snow and to cold weathers. We and so now we, start putting, now we start putting clothes on. We also don't have that fat under our skin. There's right, fat right. And so we have skin. to use, now we have to sew you know, stitch uh, hides together with needles yeah. and say, oh, you know, now we have a need. Now, now we have a need, need uh -huh. for clothes because we don't have that natural resistance that Neanderthal had. Right? So why we lost our hair is still in the air. We still don't know that for sure. But we do, we could uh, extrapolate that we made clothes because we didn't have hair when we went to the north. Right, right. And then there's a third one. So we have, uh, you know, we have uh, the uh, needle, we have the lice. Now, in other words, the scrapers. Uh, they found scrapers uh, for the old days, including for Neanderthals, where they say these scrapers were used to pull the hide from the meat. Oh, okay? okay. And so they say, ah, see, here we have evidence that, see, they pulled this, this skin off and they put it on. Oh, I thought it was because they didn't want hairy meat. And I think that's that's the reason they built these they made these scrapers. Yeah. It's it's to pull so they didn't want to eat you know this uh, this uh, hide so they pulled it off and, and they used them you know they ate the meat. Yeah. That's one. And the other ones they could have made tents for all we know. There are maybe you know carpets. We don't know what they use the the hides for. Or they just threw them away. Or maybe they threw them away. You know maybe they stank so much. You know brought all the all the fleas they or flies. <laughs> And you say, no, get rid of that, honey, you know, <laughs> I don't want that stinking thing near me, it smells too much, it is all these flies, forget it. So, you know... So there's uh, no telling what the shapers were used for. Yeah, we don't, we don't or know. Why these are theories, used. these are theories, they're interesting theories, but we should not put our hand in the fire for them. You know, we can't say, oh, scrapers are proof that, we built, that they built clothes. Lice are proof that, you know, we lost our hair and later on we needed clothes to fill the hole, you know, the, that we left behind. And um, needles, yeah, they're evidence that we use them for something. Obviously, if you have needles, and especially if you have some kind of string out there, it was almost certainly used for sewing. But we don't have that evidence for Neanderthals. So, so we don't have any evidence whatsoever that Neanderthals use clothes. What we do have is a reasoning process where we say, well, how did Homo erectus survive there, you know, in the old days? They're in the cold. Yeah, and in the and, cold, that, that's where they grew up. So they they almost by birth, from birth they had to have that resistance to cold. They had the, they must have had that extra th uh, thick fat under their skin and extra hair. Neanderthals, I mean. Uh, and even before then, yeah. Homo erectus had to live in the Arctic already. And and that's in, and there you see how interesting it is 
They always dress Neanderthals with clothes, but they never dress Homo erectus or Homo heidelbergensis with clothes. They only dress Neanderthals with clothes because, the, you know, because of the mating. They never suggest even that we slept with Heidelbergs. So the erectus <laughs> in Europe was hairy, the Heidelberg was hairy, and then we have this Neanderthal who's hairy, but all of a sudden he needs clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so the question, did Neanderthals have clothes? In fact, all these director, movie directors from documentaries, they always dress the Neanderthals up in clothes. I mean, why don't they dress the woolly mammoth in, in snowshoes while they're at it, you know, or, or whatever. It doesn't make any sense. There is no justification for, for, to dress Neanderthals with clothes. They did not have clothes. This is a gorilla, an arctic gorilla. Now, there's another issue, and that's, uh, you know, they raised the uh, issue that the reason Neanderthals had clothes is they could survive the cold. <clears throat> that's essentially what people have in their mind. They went, oh, how could, how could Neanderthal live in such low temperatures? I can't walk on snow, <laughs> barefoot. <laughs> but wolves can. Wolves sleep yeah. in the snow. So do polar bears. Now take this polar bear, take him to the equator, see if he survives. So the uh, same thing with Neanderthal. Neanderthal has this thick layer of fat, you know, and probably very hairy gorilla, and, uh, and he's used to the cold. He's not going to put anything on because he doesn't need it, first of all. Uh, there's no justification for him to evolve clothes. And then I cannot imagine Neanderthal going farther south, like to the equator, and saying, oh, this is sunny, this is warmer weather, thank God. No, he, he was an Arctic animal. That's what he was. And he lived there and he died there. You know, he, he never came out of there. Uh, so again, you know, wolves, uh, they don't need clothes, uh, woolly mammoths don't need clothes, woolly rhinos that used to live in those days, possibly the woolly hippo, there was a hippo, woolly hippo. yeah, there was a hippo in Europe also, a normal hippo, but he was like a northern hippo, he died out also, I think like 25,000 years ago, and, uh, this hippo probably was woolly too, we don't know, because, you know, we don't have skin from this animal, but my point here is that, I think that Neanderthal was the woolly man. Woolly man. He was the woolly man. He was the Yeti. <laughs> Did Neanderthals live in all of Europe? Like all the way down to southern Europe? Uh, they lived all the way to Italy, yeah, southern part of Italy and Greece and Yugoslavia. But, but keep in mind that the glaciers were all the way to the Alps. So it was cold weather all the way down yeah, to the, the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean wasn't frozen. It no, it wasn't. Walk no, no. Down to the no, it wasn't frozen. It wasn't fro the Mediterranean wasn't frozen. But for Homo erectus to make it to England, the channel yeah. that today is is the strip of water was frozen. They could Probably. cross into England, you know, on foot. I'm saying it's another reason. It's another. So it was cold. It's another reason explaining how or why the Neanderthals didn't go to the south because they had the Mediterranean in the way. Well, they could have gone through uh, through Turkey. Yeah, it would have to be this roundabout And again, way. they would have to cross the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, what is it, the Ardennes there, the uh, little uh, strip of water that's between Turkey and uh, the mainland, uh, European mainland. So I'm not sure they even took the trouble. Why, why go there? They, not only that, but they had probably enough game yeah. in their own region. They, they had no reason to go to Israel or to the Middle East. Uh, so the question is whether the Middle Eastern so-called Neanderthals were really Neanderthals or some kind of archaic human. And there are these two uh, opinions today. On whether, for sure, the uh, ones in the Middle East did not match the Neanderthals in Western Europe. They're, they're noticeably different. They're measurably different. Okay? You can see Assuming they're Neanderthals at all. Assuming they're, yeah, but I, I mean, that's the point. If they are Neanderthals, they're different. But more than likely, they're just archaic humans. Yeah. So. Uga. So, what does it take to put some sense into the minds of those people who think that their great-grandmothers descend from the Neanderthals? Well, let me tell you what I think. Go, Abanga! <laughs>